Hi everyone, today I will be calling page from Norse Mythology, book by Jade Summer. I selected this page long time ago and finally I found time to actually color it. I will be calling God Frey and as I read that he is a ruler of peace and God of rain, sunshine, fertility. So I decided that on my picture everything will be quite calm, nothing very aggressive, uh, like probably uh, red clouds or orange sky. I decided to use natural colors, colors for the landscape behind the god. But as it's north and Iceland probably, I decided to use muted colors, not very bright, for the sky, for the hills and for the grass. And I decided that it will be perfect picture to use my set of acrylic paints, which is called 12 shades of grey. In this set we have some cold grey, warm grey colors, but also mixes of grey with various other colors like yellow gray like blue gray they are all muted and i think that they will be very suitable for this page other reason why i selected this picture it was because of the boar if you're familiar with the movie hobbit probably you remember gnome dying and his very boar I put picture of dying iron food and his adorable warrior boar on the screen. When I started to do this page, terrifying idea that at some moment I also would need to color boar and its fur hadn't planted in my head yet. I was more preoccupied by selecting colors for the landscape. For the sky I decided to use a couple of shades of paints. I have paint by Ukrainian manufacturer, color is called porcelain blue and it's a very pleasant muted pastel blue color. And together with it I will be using pale grey color from this set of 12 shades of grey. I was very enthusiastic when I started to color. I use synthetic brushes, I selected a big flat brush, medium flat brush, but due to my lack of skills of using acrylic paints, this picture was almost ruined already on the first minutes. My biggest mistake was that instead of covering the whole area of the sky with selected paints, I decided to follow lines those shapes of clouds and it didn't look good. Mm. I didn't like brush strokes which I got on the paper and areas between clouds mm, didn't look very tidy and after I started to add also white color to indicate upper parts of those clouds everything started to look even more terrible. The good thing is acrylic paint is a very forgiving medium. First of all, it doesn't ruin paper. You know that paper in this book is of medium quality. It's not bad, but also not the thickest one. But it was easily to work with acrylic paints on this paper. Paint didn't ruin surface of the paper and as a I already mentioned in many of my videos, if you don't like color of your acrylic background, you can easily cover it with any other colors, because acrylic paints mostly are completely opaque. So after a couple of minutes of struggle with clouds, I, decide, I realized my mistake that first I need to cover the whole area of the sky with one color or maybe by uh, putting on the brush two paints simultaneously, a little bit of blue and a little bit of grey, but still I need to cover the whole area of the sky and only then on this 
dual background, I can draw some clouds if I decide that my background requires it. And it was what I did in the end. I took a couple of deep breaths. I decided that I won't be panicking, that I won't allow to ruin this paper even if I had the second copy in the same book. So I covered the whole background with one blue color, with a, a little addition of blue. And I realized that this coloring won't be a piece of cake for me. I hadn't started yet to color full of the boar as the most dreadful part for me, and I already managed to create problems for myself. While I was waiting for my ugly grey-blue sky to dry in order to be able to put second layer of paint on top of it, I decided to work on the ground and grass. From the set of 12 shades of grey, I selected green-grey as a main color, but as I definitely wanted to add some additional color accents, I also decided to use a little bit of yellow-gray. They are both quite pleasant colors and um, what I did, I put a lot of green-gray paint on my flat brush and then I touched a little bit of yellow-gray, so in this, um, simultaneously on my brush I had two paints and when I color area of the grass and ground, uh, there were visible small uh, strokes of this yellow-gray into green-gray. I didn't want to do any details on the gra uh, gra ground and grass. I thought that they would distract attention from the main figure of the god. I simply wanted to cover the whole area with this muted green gray color. At least I managed not to ruin this part of the picture. The main task was to go all around the figure of the boar 
quite uh, patiently in order not to leave any uncolored spaces between grass and figure of the boar. When I started to color hills or mountains which are behind, I have almost repeated my mistake which I did on the sky. When I started to color each individual um, element segment of these hills with various colors, then I realized that it also will look not very attractive. So first I cover the whole area of each of the hills using cold gray. And then I added additional color accents using a little bit of blue, a little bit of green. And then I thought that as it's quite easy to work with pencils on top of acrylic paints, maybe I'd better stop here and on top of this cold gray mountain I'd better add color accents and some contours using regular pencils. Again, I was really afraid that I will destroy the whole picture with my mm, poor acrylic skills. During the whole this coloring I felt myself extremely clumsy, but I realized that without practice, without learning better how acrylic paints behave, how it's better to mix them on the palette or on the paper, um, how it's better to layer them, do I need to wait until the first layer would dry or I may add second layer almost immediately because acrylic paints dry very quickly. So I realized that I definitely needed practice and I proceeded even if, as I said, it wasn't a very easy coloring for me. Next, I decided to test how my pencils from various brands will behave on top of these acrylic paints and I was quite pleased. I realized that using Derwin drawing colors, which have very nice natural colors, very suitable for this landscape, and also with polychromoses, I will be able to add 
necessarily contrast and additional color accents to the background, so it was my clue to stop working with acrylic paints and to start working with colored pencils. When I did shade under the legs of the bore, I realized that I totally forgot to color grass um, area between legs of the bore, so I had to return and to color this area. It's a sign how stressed I was when I was coloring with acrylic paints. But still, in the end, I enjoyed it and I definitely will be coloring more with acrylic paints because I really love the effect which I get in the end. It's almost painterly look. I managed to mask almost all black lines on the background and I really love this look of the landscape. But sky still bothered me and I decided to try using neocolor crayon in pale grey or white colors to create very, shape, very soft shapes of cloud. I don't, didn't want them to be quite bright, to have quite um, uh, sharp shapes. So um, I wanted them to be only a little bit visible to make my sky less boring, to add something to this grey-blue color. In a couple of places I worked with neocolors just like um, with regular crayons. I simply uh, spreaded pigment on top of acrylic paints with my fingertips. And in some areas where I wanted softer shape or more transparent look, I added a little bit of water. Acrylic paint is uh, permanent after drying, so I wasn't afraid to use water. At this moment I realized that probably it's time to stop working on the landscape. I definitely wasn't able to add something to improve my background, but I definitely could worsen it. Background definitely isn't is far from perfect. It has a lot of imperfections and not very good nicely covered areas, but at least it has pleasant muted colors and it's exactly what I wanted for the background not to distract attention from the god himself. Next I realized when I started to color clothes of the god that I colored area between body and arm as a part of the sky, but Freyr has a cloak on his shoulders, so cloak has to be visible behind his back. It's nice that it's easy to work with pencils on top of acrylic paints, so I simply changed color of this area to the green. And green will be the main color of the Freyr's clothes. 
I have problems with selecting colors for the God's clothes for the whole this book. I don't think that bright colors will suit Norse mythology gods, so they will have only brown or blue or green colors, so something very natural and even muted. The first god, which I colored already, had blue cloak, so for the god of rain and nature, obvious choice was to use greens. I think that with polychromoses it's easier to color all the small details here and in my opinion then they layer better on this paper, so they will be my main choice. But for the bore I will be using some additional pencil brands. When I started to work with colored pencils I finally was able to relax and to enjoy this coloring in full strength. From this moment everything else was quite easy and even the terrifying bore wasn't as dreadful as I expected. So I hope that you would follow next parts of this color along. I highly recommend this book because it's not very often we have male characters and I think that mm, faces, figures and clothes elements here are very nicely done and paper is also not so bad. So if you're interested in this Sam of Norse mythology or simply if you want to practice in coloring uh, figures, both female and male, you can look at this nice book. Thank you.